Welcome to the fourth tutorial for the physics tool bag. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about force utilities and force triggers. In this scene I have a rocket and as with past tutorials some stacks of boxes. And what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to use force utilities to give the rocket enough velocity to reach the boxes and then I'm going to use force triggers to add an explosion where the rocket impacts the ground next to the boxes. I'm going to start off by adding a rigid body helper to the rocket. Rigid body helper can be found under physics tool bag, force utilities, rigid body helper. I've talked about the rigid body helper a little bit in past tutorials, but basically it's a component that lets you add velocity and angular velocity to your rigid bodies. It also lets you adjust the center of mass for your rigid bodies. But for this tutorial I'm going to leave the center of mass at zero. I don't need to add any rotation to the rocket, but if I wanted to add some spin, I could do that as well. I am, however, going to add a velocity of 22 in the x-axis and 22 in the y-axis. And this should give us enough velocity for the rocket to reach its target. So the rocket is making its way towards the boxes, but it's always pointing upwards. So I'm going to add another component to it called the orient to velocity component and the orient to velocity component orients an object's forward axes to the velocity of its rigid body. So now the orientation of the rocket follows its trajectory. I'm going to add one last component to the rocket I'm going to add the continual force component. The rocket's engine should be continually accelerating the rocket, and right now that isn't happening. So what the continual force script allows you to do is add a constant force to your object. This force can be added in world space or in local space. To be fair, I should point out that the functionality of this script is identical to the constant force script that ships with Unity. The difference with continual force is it includes some handy widgets so that you can see visually exactly how the forces you're adding are going to affect your object. I'm going to give the rocket a relative force of 10 in the z-axis. And now that the continual force is adding velocity to our rocket, the initial velocity that we have set in the rigid body helper doesn't need to be as high. So I'm going to change that to 10 in the y-axis. And I still want the rocket to get pushed in the x-axis a little bit, so I'm going to give that a value of 0 0.5. And now the rocket accelerates upwards, pitches downwards, and then slams itself into the ground. Now that the rocket is moving the way I want it to, I am going to add some force triggers.
I'm going to start out by adding a velocity trigger. And on the rocket, there is this shockwave particle system. And on this particle system, I'm going to add a force trigger action. I'm going to add the play particles trigger action. Now I'm going to select the rocket again. I'm going to go to the velocity trigger. And I'm going to say trigger if velocity is greater than. I'm going to put in 35. I want this trigger to only trigger once. So I'm going to check that checkbox. And I'm going to tell it to use the action I just put on the shockwave particles. So now what happens is the rocket accelerates. When its velocity is great enough, the shockwave effect plays. Now I'm going to add another force trigger. This force trigger is going to be the velocity change trigger. And what the velocity change trigger does is it triggers when an object's velocity changes enough. In our case, this is going to be when the rocket collides with the ground. When the rocket collides with the ground, there are several different things I want to happen. For one, I want this explosion particle system to play. So I'm going to add the play particles trigger action to those particles. I also want the exhaust particles to stop playing. So I'm going to go to trigger actions. I'm going to add a stop particles trigger action. Uh, once the rocket explodes, I don't want it to be visible anymore. So I'm going to add a disable object trigger action. So I'm going to go to the velocity change trigger. Uh, since we have three actions that this trigger is going to use, I'm going to change the action count to three. I'm going to tell it to use the exhaust, the explosion, and we want the rocket to be hidden. I'm going to tell the velocity change trigger to trigger if the velocity is greater than 25, and I want it to trigger only once. Sometimes figuring out what values to use for the uh, velocity change trigger script can be pretty tricky. So when you hit play, uh, there's this readout here that tells you how much the velocity is changing. Okay, so the rocket slammed into the ground, the explosion played, the rocket disappeared, and the exhaust stopped. The rocket isn't quite landing in the middle of all the boxes, so I'm going to change this value on the continual force to 9.9. .9. I'm going to add one last trigger action. I'm going to put it on this explosion force object. And I'm putting it on this object instead of the rocket object because the rocket object already has a trigger action on it. So for the purposes of organization, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to create a spawn explosion trigger action. And what the spawn explosion trigger action does is when it's executed, it creates a point force object that simulates an explosion. 
I'm going to change the magnitude to 300. I'm going to leave the duration as 0.2. And I'm going to change the start distance to 7 and the end distance to 25. I'm going to go back to the uh, velocity change trigger. I'm going to change the trigger action count to 4. And I'm going to tell it to use the explosion force. And now, when the rocket impacts the ground, all the boxes in the scene get flung away from the explosion. That's all I have for this tutorial. Uh, feel free to check out our other tutorials, or if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to visit our forums. Thanks for watching.